продолжаем до... Good afternoon, everyone. We continued in Bass Media Forum. Today with us uh, we have our speakers. My name is Andrei Romanenko. I'm journalist and coordinator of the Center for Public Control. In this panel discussion we are talking about the draft law on media threats and opportunities for the industry. We have with us Alexander Tkachenko, Minister of Culture and Information Policy of Ukraine, Oleksiy Pohorelov, President of the Ukrainian Media Business Association, <coughs> Oleksandr Burmahin, a lawyer, and Diana Ducic. And we hope that uh, Nikita Potoraev, uh, Chair of the Verkhovna Rada Committee on Humanitarian Information Policy, will join us later. My first question is to Alexander. Alexander, so do we need this draft law? Because there are uh, several documents which kind of regulate uh, the area of mass media and communication. Why do we need vaccination? This is about uh, strengthening the health of the media sphere because uh, there are about from five to six documents which were adopted in the mid of the 1990s. And these are the laws on media, on uh, uh, printed media, on TV. Uh, TV stations, they were relevant 20 years ago. However, we don't have a law which would correspond to the current challenges. When we had a discussion about this draft law, colleagues from different uh, spheres expressed their opinion. The key uh, provision was why do you provide so much responsibility to the regulator and why do you need to regulate internet? However, I would I would start this discussion between the vaccinators and anti-vaxxers because when we, if we are for the healthy lifestyle, for the healthy cooperation and interaction and development of our industry, which might be fair and transparent, uh, we need to plan our activities for the years to come. We are speaking of the opportunity of the need to have this draft law because most people around us uh, get information online in social media, in uh, webs from websites, and in big cities uh, they mostly consume uh, news of, in social media. We see a decline in uh, the number of people who watch TV, and this fear of online media is not regulated a lot at all. That is why there are challenges related to Russian propaganda and we do not have a document, we do not have um, a law that we would uh, base our advice upon. Uh, this draft law specifies in a delicate matter of measures of uh, counteracting Russian propaganda. On the other hand, uh, there are rules of some regulation. Uh, this draft law has gone through a series of very hard discussions with different communities. What is very important uh, that it has gone through discussion in the Council of Europe. Experts of the Council of Europe did their best, so this draft law is uh, uh, amended, so it corresponds better to the European standards. The discussion around this draft law during all this time, there were a lot of legal acts adopted in the EU and in the US. They were much more serious uh, uh, judging their impact on the society than what is stipulated in this law on media. Then, so it's like comparing um, those who are pro and contra vaccination. <coughs> Well, maybe that's not uh, the best comparison uh, between uh, pro and uh, contra vaccination. So my qu next question is the following. Is it a threat uh, to the freedom of the media? Because I often hear that internet in Ukraine is uh, the uh, place where people feel more or less free. And when this law is adopted, it will change. Well. I would like to state our conceptual position. I can say that I am on uh, for vaccination and I think that this law needs to be adopted despite several discussions that are related to it. I agree with uh, Mr. Tkachenko that our legislation in the sphere of the media is outdated. In any case, we need to adopt a new law which will introduce new concepts, new 
terminology which is related to online media. It is very important. So here in this question, I don't even have any arguments. I also belong to those people who think, those experts, who think that there shall be some kind of regulation of online media. Recently, I was present at a conference uh, which uh, got together influencers. They have their own YouTube blogs, uh, different blogs and different media. And I was impressed by a speech by a young blogger, YouTube blogger. She said, but during a discussion about ethics, ethics within the context of the work of influencers all over social media, she said, what are you talking about hate speech? How will I continue creating content for my blog if I don't use hate speech? This is what exactly brings me those like uh, shares and views of my content. And you know, to me, it was one more sign that we need to speak of a civilized approach and civilized understanding of our responsibility for what we do. Because, you know, we were speaking of freedom. Many people understand the freedom as anarchy. However, it's not anarchy. Being free means being responsible for what you do personally. It is responsibility for what you say, for what you do. Because in a globalized world, every world, every word has an impact. This is a called so-called butterfly effect. When a butterfly uh, flaps its wings on uh, one part of the planet and uh, something terrible uh, like a storm happens on the other hemisphere of the planet. So today, uh, when going to this meeting, I took a look at the updated version of this draft law on the website of the Verkhovna Rada of Ukraine. Of course, there are some aspects which, needs, which need to be discussed. There are things that we will need to get back to and to amend. However, as of now, we need to adopt this law. So, question to Alexander Burmahin. If we are speaking of the existing legal framework which regulates the media, so, what are the key differences of this draft law? What does it change? I know that it regulates internet and it makes all the internet media enter the legal, legitimate uh, market because not all of them were legal before. It's different. It's an absolutely new foundation for regulation in this area. Not only in this area, but also in other neighboring areas. Because of the topic of media and regulation of the media according to the new terms, according to the new philosophy which exists all over the world, it, it is related not only to the area, to the sphere of media. Last week we worked as part of uh, the working group with the election code. We worked on uh, the articles which were related to, to uh, campaigning. And I would like to say that uh, those election issues, it's impossible to write in the election code something good about the Internet, because as soon as we uh, think who will regulate, we stop there. And then who do we put it on? On the National Commission, then we have to rewrite all of the uh all the all of the moments that touch it so whom who should it be so we have the level of regulation is such that you are not just you know media it's all very outdated and it doesn't is not in line with the today's current realities so without good foundation we cannot you know move forward in any neighboring also spheres not only the media sphere but in the project itself there are new institutes there are norms on destating the regional radio is this is the obligation uh, in front of the uh, council of europe 
there is a big institute of co-regulating when it concerns difficult questions and content limitations when it's about hate speech uh, propagating hatred so such things which are very painful for the industry because there are no clear criteria and they can't be per definition so the institute for core co-regulation allows to solve these problems in the civilized way because the regulator together with the industry creates the common um, you know teams uh, developing the codes on the uh, different uh, you know arguable matters so th the market could develop and the regular would have certain restrictions and not and wouldn't abuse it uh, there are also matters of counteracting russian aggression as of 2014 we are at war but our legislation has changed only one to three and it seems like in media there is no information aggression or information war if we take our legislation there is a chapter dedicated to these matters very liberal regulation of online media because it's upon consent and secondly gives more possibilities in opinion of developers than limitations and the new terminology itself one of the key questions is why this project is awaited by telecom because this sphere is also in the gray zone and those who work in ukraine on the white zone they lose those who go under the you know black flag to, to the cinemas and including from russia and if our subjects ukrainian national subjects they have lots of liabilities and so on though all those who work in the black or gray zone they ignore it they get the audience they get money I f forget about the possible negative influence through some TV series, films, and so on. So now we have many outdated gaps which are not regulated, or it's a total gap. And this is the foundation. And another thing this project it's a foundation but it's not full mechanism because a lot will have to be done on the secondary legislation other laws which would uh, close all of these issues that i have mentioned so are you for vaccine or anti-vaccinator i don't want to play this game what do you think about this law do we need it and what are the questions and warnings about it as a business representative industry representative these are the positions i shall speak on behalf of uh, what we mentioned the positions on the law on the media haven't changed and alexander has outlined the main needs which the regulator in the face of the state thinks necessary to decide and that's okay i have been saying a lot in the industry and the industry itself has been saying the let's Apart from playing the game of responsibility and fines and uh, accountability and other things, let's not forget that apart from the negative motivation, there is a positive motivation. Any businessman, any uh, CEO of the company can tell you that positive um, motivation is a lot more effective than the negative one. Unfortunately, the law doesn't envisage the positive uh, motivation. It doesn't say anything about self-regulation. There's only co-regulation. But in the sphere of content, uh, self-regulation works very effectively. So, unfortunately, there's still some injustice. Uh, you know, Article 32, they still haven't eliminated it. I will quote, Article 32 declares possibility of financing so item three audio visual materials can be financed from the budget uh, uh, from the state budget local budget which actually contradicts the destated uh, press i have the right for my opinion i'm communicating so my opinion lies in it being discrimination of one industry in relation to another one and unfortunately it's still in the law so my motive my thesis is about motivators uh, well, that's what i want to hear about during this discussion i can say from the point of view of motivation there are two replies to this question it's not a game vaccine it's something very serious secondly on the one hand we're saying for us to have 
transparent rules uh, for all and on the other hand there is a decision of um, Security Council which fill in these gaps. If you want to move in the direction of uh, the decision of the Security Council, this is a very positive motivator, a very powerful one. So we have two ways. Uh, we go along the law because the Security Council is obliged to make some, you know, laws because uh, some of the things are quite obvious and they have to be solved somehow. Second is about positive motivation in the form of fine funding. We have started a discussion with our colleagues about creating a very powerful, you know, driver so that the TV series could be filmed and the regional newspapers could get additional funds from the state. Um, and also initiating the um, campaigns against anti-vaccine and of course there must be funds presupposed to help the media by the state including internet air uh, sphere on the other hand giving the possibility to po to give a positive motivation but this solution or the decision shouldn't it doesn't necessarily have to be made by the law it's something that can be discussed by the cabinet ministers and they can implement such measures. Uh, for example, there is a decision on creating really powerful opportunities of development, of promoting our information, positive narratives abroad. It's also a positive motivator, which in this way or that way is to be solved. But this is not the norm of the law. It's the concept, the strategy that has been approved, on, for example, on the level of information safety but the base uh, that we can be based on it doesn't exist when we communicate it with the media the thesis that we heard don't touch us we won't touch you the national council will touch you but there are many good examples when any other bodies can touch you and you can say nothing when there is the law in place you can use it and these are different uh, rules of game then during today's discussion several times many people said that we in fact lose the information war with russia this law does it give any additional um you know guns that we can using which we can uh, contra counteract the Russian aggression. You know, right now you can you, uh, you check the uh, Russian OTT platforms in Ukraine and there you will see all of those TV series which are officially banned for television but you can watch them there. This law regulates this question. Just like it, can, uh, it uh, doesn't regulate what is propaganda, what is hate speech by Russia no aggression. So creating norm on legal base so using court you could refute the decisions now the national council ha doesn't have the the steering so on the one hand there are so many discussions we had about this law and and I didn't hear so many discussions about any other law. It seems to me we can get to the point when this is going to be solved in this way. You know, just small, minor amendments to the old laws, which will look like you are, uh, you know, sewing in the hole on your pants. But they may even either look good or they can be arguable but these amendments will pass very fast and there will be no time to comment on it but the general picture is not going to change and they can be even more decisive than it is envisaged by the law because we can play this game for as long that these amendments can appear uh, I want to speak about the stimuli and motivation I would like to actually argue with Oleksii. When I spoke about responsibility, I didn't only mean fines. 
from has the freedom for and freedom against so responsibility it is in the context of freedom for so i mean it's not only about that we can do something responsibly only when the uh, fine is uh, hanging over our head so it's so in a wider understanding and i suppose it's necessary to promote this culture of responsibility because otherwise it won't appear as for motivation Uh, Mr. Minister has mentioned the strategy of the National Information Security and it seems to me that the law on media is to be communicated in the context of general media policy of the state as a comprehensive one because when we speak about the motivation system especially during or in conditions of war it is necessary to to speak not only about some benefits we have a wonderful tool ukrainian cultural fund there are other funds that can give grants the ukrainian cultural fund started giving grants for media literacy when we speak about stimulating national producer i mean information of information product perhaps the state could stimulate and support and motivate and give grants for media which work per standards which produce qu good quality product and do not undermine the system of national security right so it is important and when we speak about responsibility per some law we have to say in general he, look we have these such stimuli and if the state could pro uh, promote this that would be a wonderful thing it's the bike that doesn't have to be invade, invented it just has to be enhanced the incentives maybe maybe you have just to make it go better because now it's on the brakes so you ought to look for the incentives in this sphere so as for the co-regulation um, I have checked this chapter of the law and i have a critical attitude to it because i am also convinced that in some way we are to fix the question of self-regulation because you know our industry says what is self-regulation what is commission what is the media council we don't know them they are not in the laws they are making some decisions on the ethics but what we do what do we have to do with these uh, decisions we work here and you make decisions that's when we speak about some ethical uh, platform i'm not saying that you are to include in the law certain institutes working in the self-regulating system today but i'm saying that in the law you are to include the principle of self-regulation which is the sign for the industry that it needs to look in that direction and i think it's an important aspect and that's what we lack sasha will argue with me i'm not going to argue with you we have a very civilized and good discussion in my opinion i just want to comment on self-regulation regulation and co-regulation to pay attention of our colleagues me as a representative of the working group that has been working with the text we've always been between two three or four fires because we all understand that self-regulation in ukraine requires additional incentives and development but on the other hand all the international standards and that's just uh, naturally so and the national standards say that that self-regulation should develop from the uh, from the uh, down words and due to norms or laws and norms which are imperative that's Verkhovna Rada that is regulation we need to have those provisions in this draft law however it will raise other questions from international institutions because all stations by OCE Council of Europe say that self-regulation must 
happen in parallel with state regulation, these processes must be different because different norms of legislation must act here. If we try to write about it in detail, it will it can be regarded as a limitation of self-regulation because these norms, these limitations can be regarded as such in different spheres. As for the co-regulation, experts of the Council of Europe also had complaints because we are some kind of limiting uh, responsibilities of the regulator. In all countries of Europe, regulators are very powerful their scope of activities is different from that of Ukraine. We cannot compare their scope activities. In Latvia and Litva, regulators banned Russian uh, TV channels and uh, media outlets for promoting uh, heroin as uh, the way to treat COVID. And this is uh, the recent decision by the regulator. We don't have this opportunity just to ban some outlets because we have a lib liberal um, legislation. When we are speaking of the co-regulation, which is a compromise, then we have these complaints from our colleagues from the Council of Europe because uh, it limits uh, the scope of the regulator. because they will uh, intervene into what regulator decides on its own about the propaganda, about uh, the hate speech and so on and so forth. I just want to explain what is now described as a co-regulation. This is a compromised model between the industry and the regulator. It uh, has already uh, raised some question. If we discuss it in the context of self-regulation, it will also raise some question. Of course, Ukraine can do um, what uh, we want. We just need to uh, explain what we want to do. As for the motivation, I can quote an example. Uh, as for the online media, I personally know a lot of journalist projects that work online in YouTube and they are waiting for this uh, law to be um, to be adopted because they want to work efficiently, they want to they don't want to register an information agency because they don't want to be an information agency. We are a media outlet. We just work online. A registration will provide them with uh, proper status. As for the co-regulation, uh, there, there is a lot of motivation to do that. Of course, we can improve that. Question about the regulation. If one of the complaints to this draft law that there is a new regulator in Ukraine, which uh, comprises a lot of areas, if you compare that uh, to international practice, at which stage on the international scale we are there. It is called convergent regulator, which unites several areas of regulation. However, models might be very different. There are countries where these activities are combined in other countries. There are different convergent um, regulators. For example, Ofcom in the UK is such an example of uh, a convergent regulator. It also has uh, the uh, responsibility to uh, regulate transport, so it, it has quite a large scope of activities. Uh, they can make decisions on whether to ban particular websites, uh, they can limit uh, access to internet by some media outlets. So there are different, uh, different uh, ways regulators can work. The most important is that it works properly. This law is a living body. It's not a sentence. In order for the law to live its own life, it must be born. Now it looks like that uh, we have a lot of repairs to the roads and it seems like this um, uh, draft law is uh, going through these new roads, but the car is very old discussion around uh, re responsibilities of the regulator might uh, last uh, forever. 
what I want to highlight is that we need to um, to understand that we need to change this car that we are traveling in because it's too old we cannot uh, drive it any longer how about if we try to upgrade a car we can do that but we need to start with something we need to start somewhere in western europe uh, you are quoting ofcom uh, it was a long tradition the world is uh, now very different uh, we see that there are a lot of legislators that um, make the decisions, decisions very slowly however they understand that the internet area is very important so they adopt uh, draft laws which are based on a uh, legal framework here in ukraine we don't have this legal basis a uh, legal framework i mean it's it's flawed it's not perfect uh, for example, the situation with uh, the ban on um, channels belonging to Medvedchuk. Uh, this process lasted so long, this decision was reviewed many times, though there was a case when regional licenses were united. I'm not even talking about the content or uh, terror finding. We need to give the regulator the mandate. The regulator might be good or bad. If it is bad, the society will uh, protest uh, and if there is a bad regulator they will find ways to uh, influence this regulator so in this condition when this draft law might be adopted recently i talked to my colleagues from from the parliament makita wants to uh, review this uh, draft law very fast uh, then the, we wanted to divide this law into two audio visual part and another part so but it seems to me that it needs to be submitted to the parliament of ukraine and you speak of the parliament knows about this draft law so i hope that uh, thanks to joint forces uh, we will submit this draft law and uh, we will hear it in the first reading Alexei, you know very well uh, about uh, the media landscape of Ukraine. So what do we need to regulate right now? Because uh, we are used to living in the paradigm where newspapers, magazines, radios and a couple of websites. However, how does this market look like? What do we need to regulate? Don't ask the business what needs to be regulated. Nothing, nothing. I agree with my colleagues the basis that we work on the legal framework must be uh, contemporary must be must serve to the benefit of the society so my philosophy is the following we don't need to make those minor repairs the problem is not at those details the problem is so what we need to regulate nothing everything works the problem is in the balance between uh, the stimuli. I agree that we need um, um, ta uh, that we need to have this strong framework. We need we understand that uh, companies that work on the market want to have this uh, law. As for the market, it's very varied. There are different companies playing on it. I know my market very well, and this is publishing houses which are multi-platform they have digital uh, department uh, and some of them also publish uh, print media because uh, uh, the world is different um, so it's not like during soviet times when there was only one media outlet uh, Pravda newspaper there are national companies there are publishing houses there are audio visual companies and on top of that there are local companies which employ three people those three people at the level of community they create content which might cover 54,000 of um, people uh, this is fantastic uh, situation for a small community those media 
they have printed version, they have online version, they have online radio, they have several Facebook groups. They have a lot. They work for this audience. What they say, what uh, Miss, what uh, Mr. Tkachenko has said, what is not discussed verbally here, if the National Council will have this mandate to uh, say that this content is not uh, right, we have gone through that before. This is a classic manipulation. I'm, I'm sorry, we cannot say what is right, what is wrong. There's nothing about that. There is only one article, number nine, which is related to Russian aggression. It is only happening in this context. That's all. Well, there are other articles about children, for example. These are some of very important things, but it's not the only one. Uh, if uh, you want to uh, say about the pedophilia, then it's one thing. If you want to raise the issue of the hate speech, then it's different. However, Article 103. For the check, it is necessary to get uh, a request from a legal or natural person from a state authority or from local government which is related to possible crimes or possible violation of the legal framework or uh, conditions of a license. For ex Do you know how many public requests the ministry receives every day? 30% of the work of our employees is dedicated to responding to those public uh, requests because uh, we need to follow the law, we need to be open and transparent. And this is exactly why we are open. Uh, ministries are open and many organizations shall also be open. It's not because we want to go there. Uh, this is additional work for the National Council. Well, Mr. Tkachenko, I'm talking about this mistrust. The society doesn't trust anyone. <laughs> and uh, there are conditions for that. We are talking about mistrust that this concrete provision might be the basis for a snap check of a media outlet and then violations might be identified. But we cannot avoid having this provision. What I want to say, this is what Alexander wants to say about the details that some things can be explained in one sentence. I'm not a lawyer, I don't know how to do that because there are experts who do that. Uh, so I represent here the stance of the business. We need to have a zone which might be self-regulated. So let's discuss how we can write that in one short provision. Well, I told you, as for the self-regulation, how do we um, write it? I discussed it with Tatiana Lebedeva. I told her that personally I'm not against it. However, it must be a very delicate uh, feature. We need to discuss that. As for the those evaluations, those audits, it was my personal pain because I took part in those discussions. The part which is related to the sanctions of audits was the most difficult for the working group because the working group consisted of uh, the regulator of the industry and in the industry uh, used uh, the uh, word phantom pains and there were representatives of civil society organizations. Uh, we spent a lot of time, we fought for every comma, for every dot. Uh, we had very uh, hot discussions and it seems to me the way it looks like now this is the result of very serious compromise, a serious balance. Of course there are a lot of mechanisms which might be safeguards for the business and the industry. Uh, secondly, the mechanism of warnings has been introduced for some minor violations. They will warn and say, you cannot do like this. And uh, as you, Alexei, said, for some uh, severe violations, the most serious sanctions but there are not so many grounds for that plus um, uh, the abolishment of um, is only on the decision uh, uh, so on the sanctions and inspections I don't want to give so many details for the audience but indeed 
a lot is uh, liberalized there as compared to what we have now, both for the industry and for the regulator itself. Alexander, one more time, not to be heard incorrectly. I'm not saying I'm against. I'm saying there are phantom pains. We have to prepare the law, of course. You cannot drive the old car, but I don't know how to do it. We have to go. We have to drive. But if you're saying that, uh, uh, you're saying that there are some. I would like to give example from my own example. I worked at the One Plus One channel. They, they didn't want to, um, you know, proceed our license to prolong our license and they had very serious grounds and there was a political will they wouldn't so even at this regulation you can use this law very easily but for this law uh, it's going to be to do it difficult I also have the phantom pains and I think it's better to have clear rules rather than not to have them at all and these rules just like we're driving in our car along the road we have to learn to drive you are acquiring new skills or you're changing your skills and they need to be corrected but the phantom pains they do not disappear until you discuss this question until you talk it up and go through the natural culture of dialogue because you know we have gathered together a lot and we were discussing it this correct format like we have now but another thing when it goes to when it is transformed into some public accusations it's a dictatorship with uh, on this level of discussion it's hard to argue because when you are told that your daughter is this and that but indeed i have a son you know then you cannot have a good discussion two more words a bright example of why it was a compromise and the order of inspection that is now in the draft is very important and interesting interesting for the industry because today the entire order uh, the entire procedure of inspection is decided by the national committee now it's in the law the procedure itself is in the law and the regulator was against it a lot he it said you don't need these six articles how the inspection starts how long it has to last and uh, but uh, there, this procedure includes uh, lots of you know uh, protectors This is a good example of a compromise because now the procedure for inspection is in the law, not in the secondary legislation, well, in the draft law. And the second thing I would like to remind you of, there was a civilized discussion on the basis of Aspen Institute, Aspen, Aspen Institute uh, and Rachmanin, Mr. Rachmanin from Holos from The Voice said, we speak a lot about this project for over a year, you need to vote for it and then it's clear it's not perfect then you have to you know f uh, review it because implementation of the law will also take some time and it will require as i said the secondary legislation and clearly that when the practical use starts it will be the uh, all the flaws will become visible i would like to ask you a question if we look at the uh, the uh, feedback by the media community to this law then those who are regulated now the broadcasters they feel positively about the law because the level of regulation decreases and they get clearer rules and less options for some abuse by the regulator but those who uh, didn't regulate uh, or not regulate like internet they perceive it worse right is it my is it correct observation yes that, but there is a number of media outlets who work, who are convergent. They even moved to online format, but they are registered as information agencies. So we have a number of them which are registered as online agencies. And they say that we are not in equal conditions now. 
but it seems to me that we are registered and that we are to comply with some laws but part of the market is doesn't work for any uh, rules they have anarchy and in fact these are not equal conditions to a certain extent but they are to be the same for all the players of the market big small doesn't matter it's an important moment so for those who work online who's registered as information agency they asked why did we do this and others don't and another important thing for a consumer and I would like to emphasize on it not a lot has been said about this me as a consumer I want to understand who feeds me information uh, for example now you go on some website you can check who's the editor who's the journalist but now it's nothing nothing is clear and I think we are to demand and this is the uh, obligation for all all the editorial staff members is to be mentioned no I don't mean with private phone numbers but you, we are to know who the journalists are in this editorial office why do printed me media indicate this but when I watch some story on some channels there's a last name of the journalism but online it's not clear who did this who prepared this it's like always anonymous why is it like that I me as a consumer I'm not I'm not satisfied with this I want this process to be transparent for me as a consumer of information but another thing about phantom pains it's an important matter for all of us and indeed all of us have certain fear that there will be censorship because we all went through it to a smaller or bigger extent or in, in to a different degree because that's why that fear is here so this is the question of communication with entire media environment to understand or, or explain or show if those risks are in place or not and even more urgent question is the question of fair refute of any decisions of national council in the court and that's a problem because our court system and we all understand that I know it's not the question uh, on this law on the media but it's another question that can refer to many uh, others and it's a fair appeal because fair is the important part of it that's why many questions asked by Oleksi because media journalists especially the smaller editorial offices who have no chance to give to get professional lawyers and so on they always have a fear that someone will come to them somebody will um, put pressure on him this is the context that we're living in uh, two words I just forgot to mention in the previous discussion as for National Council Alexander Vladislavich mentioned a bit about this but imagine that the National Council will sit and try to monitor how they monitor that uh, the TV uh, broadcast they will do the same online it's obviously absurd in my opinion the National Council will only regulate the applications on certain article stories and so on it will not be the thorough monitoring of the entire o uh, online s space so in this context if I'm wrong please correct me I think it's not in the law in this context on the part of co-regulation when we talk about these uh, how do you call them these uh, co commissions it's important for us to maybe grow the good institute of experts because the question is who will, uh, will these commissions comprise of how they will evaluate content from which you know prism political or not it's impo an important question and we ought to think about it as well because the quality of experts is going to influence the quality of decisions I'm sorry I have to leave
but I would like to thank, I wanted to thank uh, you for raising this topic again. I will be happy if sooner or later, rather sooner, we adopt this law, stop arguing and work for new norms of the law. Please vaccinate because we need you alive. Yes, and thank you for participation. But we will continue because there are several more questions and I'm reminding all of our audience that you can ask your questions in the comments on Facebook. Uh, there are several pages th that are broadcasting in it of the Donetsk Institute of Information and many of our partners are taking this broadcast too. And one of the questions, the law on the media is to stimulate the establishment of new media that are not going to be dependent upon big media groups. So the question for the speakers, can you solve the monopoly situation of the old uh, gen, uh, all, uh, of the state media by creating online media? Uh, some, it, it was a bit confusing. Well, I think inter in internet monopoly is impossible. There will be competition of resources but according to experience of influencers of new media not always big capital wins such competition as compared to bloggers popular bloggers because every person today can become a media spending not so much money and have an influence and popularity more than the regional tv channels or local outlets, printed outlets. So it's hard to even um, comment on which monopoly you're talking about on the internet. It's not about, it's not the, the question is not about internet, but it says that a big market information market is controlled by big media holding and the main source of information for population remains what is uh, broadcast from Kiev and big nice studios. Uh, maybe Oleksy will continue, uh, but my own observations, top 10 sites, media holdings, only 2-3 positions. Ukraine, U Ukrainian Pravda or Truth and other outlets uh, top uh, out of top 5-10, but they're not only representatives of big media groups. I think here the question is to be asked from a different angle. Who controls the ad market? And there big sales houses work who, which control this market and the sm smaller ones cannot get through. And that's the question of the antitrust legislation and looking for the other decisions in another sphere. But here, I mean, I ha don't have statistics or data right now, but there is such a problem here, I think. I will make you all very upset. Well, first of all, recently I have spoken with my friend who is the, the head of the digital ad and agency and she says that she hasn't been working with media for two years. She says all the flow of commercial ad is placed on Google or Facebook when there is targeting, when there's reporting, transparency and a small price of contact and so on. And I asked her so and what do you go with to media she says i go with to get trust from them so she says my customers go to media when they need to associate the brand name of what they communicate with with the trust to media and here i go back to the first part of the question about the local media about or how it all seems to us in kiev that national media took everything and everywhere but it's not like that maybe in kiev because the editorial offices are here but if we look at ukraine at communities that in the part in some of the communities the relevant information the leaders of information market are privatized editorial offices which used to be communal because 700 of editorial offices we had before um destating and and it was like 20 or 30 per one oblast now there are less of them 500 and something but in half of these communities and they are the leaders of information market and in another uh, one is the le the leaders are the communities themselves 
some of them didn't want uh, with this local media so they uh, created their own media facebook groups or websites they work there quite efficiently they communicate with inhabitants of the local community because inhabitants don't need information from kiev they need local verified information for example about uh, uh, timeline of uh, local buses or when doctors work so this is local information uh, which is necessary for the local population so this law works as a physics uh, law and uh, people need local information leaders are those uh, editors offices which provide this information very fast uh, they are opinion leaders, uh, they organize different discussions, uh, they are contemporary boys and girls uh, who have a lot of work. There are three people like that working in this office and they control 10 media and they have enough time to work uh, everywhere. Just a shock, short remark, uh, this is a theory, however, Results of the opinion poll which was carried out uh, by the Decra media, 75% of Ukrainians get the information from the central TV channels. So it seems to me that our our viewer has a question. It seems to me that this question... So what was the question? Can you please read it out? Ah. So the question is... What is what the question in this opinion poll was? It's important what kind of question was asked. I saw that uh, most people got information in big on big TV channels, big media holdings. It seems to me that this question was related to this fact. Let me add to that. Maybe what I will tell now will be the answer to this question. We do have a problem. This is problem of the anti-monopoly regulation and commit in Ukraine. It was discussed uh, in the working group whether we need uh, to add to this uh, a draft law, possible monopolization and concentration of the market and media. So, so these are two parts of this provision. As for the concentration in one hand, because we had quite a powerful working group, we all understand that no matter how we write this, no matter what we do, it will be difficult because we have uh, a lot of oligarchs uh, and their companies are registered to just other people. As for the monopoly, it uh, was uh, something new to me. Anti-monopoly committee doesn't know how to regulate, how to inform, how to take into account the media market. How do we fight monopolization without having instruments to define who is a monopolist? To me, it was uh, a surprise. However, this is what we have. That is why we mentioned in this uh, draft law that this is the responsibility of the anti-monopoly committee. Well, you see, we discuss a lot that we the law is how good is this law however aren't we afraid that before this draft law becomes a law all of this will be irrelevant because as it has already been said uh, bloggers, influencers and many others are now taking over. How will we regulate social media that even American authorities cannot regulate? Oleg, so your question is valid. Even those directors of the U European uh, Union of the Audiovisual Services or Media Services, which is obligatory to Ukraine, What is written in this uh, draft law doesn't correspond to the contemporary requirements. It seems to me that until this law is adopted, it will um, get old very soon because new technologies are developing and we need to catch on that. Uh, so our original media are different uh, from the old methods of uh, having just a website. So Sasha has already answered that question. What is media? Media is a service for the audience. The audience is the king. 
if they say we don't want to read your paper, we want to read uh, news um, uh, in your smartphone, then you do that. So this is a very false developing business. Today business is built the following way. You need to launch projects uh, very often and only one of these projects will be successful. All the nine others will be will fail. You need to launch them fast, you need to fail fast and so on and so forth. This is a very long this is a very fast developing market. Why I told you about uh, this uh, small media uh, where only three people worked. However, the audience is uh, several hundred thousand uh, people. They have a printed newspaper, they have a website, so they bought their own printer and they are printing this uh, newspaper themselves. They also have a radio station, they have a page in social media, so there are only three women working. There are a lot of media outlook, outlooks, outlets like that, so it depends. Wow. In such case, I always ask, what about the quality? 60,000 audience. Well, I think that the media, traditional media, won't uh, disappear. question of the format is very important. Uh, this is flexible, it might change, format might change, because technologies are developing very fast. However, there is something very basic which, which shall not change. This is that uh, there is the key task of the journalist is to act as a filter to verify information. Because in social media, I can write whatever I want without verifying this information. However, the basis of the professional me media, this is uh, uh, checking the content, content checking, fact checking. Uh, this is the criteria which says whether this media is professional or not, or whether this is just a group of people who want to write no matter what. So this is what differentiates uh, good media from the bad. As Jana, I'm working with journalists, uh, with students, and here I saw my audience. Uh, so I tell my students the same. I s say to them, what is a blogger? This is one actor blogging. This is some kind of a corporate media. I'm a corporation and I want to publish uh, this media uh, just as I need as the head of this corporation. The same goes with bloggers. They create medias that they consider to be proper. And there are standards of journalism, uh, there are needs uh, to check information, there is a code of ethics and all the things which journalists are taught to work with. And there are media where uh, there are people who work there. This media encompasses different topics, different uh, points of view, so they cannot provide everything uh, on behalf of one blogger. So this is one story, this is how it shall be like. However, there is one story from behalf of the audience. The audience has different needs. For example, this day on Friday, I don't want to read analytical materials for 10 pages long. I just want to relax, so I read a blogger's article. Probably this is an emotional article, however, this is what I need right now, just to relax after a hard work's day. In media it is called different formats. That is why, because our life is very different, uh, then I think everyone will have their own place to do what they want. I would like to say that, as for the internet and platforms of shared access to information, there is a tectonical shift in this area. Before, international community said that Facebook, social media, they, well, they do not create content themselves, so that is why let us not regulate them, because they are just a tool, they are just like transport. However, after the latest uh, election campaign in the US, after accounts of the president of the US was blocked, uh, so this approach is different. Everyone understands that it can be used by huge media companies. Some of them, they can exclude a group of people without uh, any right to do so, without any regulation. But it will be efficient only if there will be international 
treaties because internet is about jurisdiction and this is international when we have international treaties for example there is a normative act being developed in europe elon musk internet will uh, will provide us with internet just falling from the skies from a satellite so there will be new ways uh, uh, which are not yet regulated the question is uh, do we try to follow suit or will we lag behind will we work on the basis of a previous uh, law from 1996 so the question is a little bit different how justified in this situation is adoption of these big law almost a code where it is written that uh, everything is regulated maybe we should follow the way of smaller bylaws secondary legislation which regulate um, specific areas because we're talking about internet about uh, printed media and uh, while we were discussing this it turned out that our life has changed significantly in my opinion, we have gone through this long way. And the question would be to hear a position of Mukita about what is happening in the Parliament of Ukraine, because these uh, discussions uh, have been there for many years. Uh, this uh, uh, version of the draft law is a compromise, and it can be uh, improved of course but it seems to me that the importance of this document is uh, that it will become the foundation for many spheres all of this legal framework even in those uh, areas where it exists it is morally old if we change one part of it for example we will have one part of the law on audiovisual services then probably part of the internet will be excluded from the draft law if you talk to experts in election campaigns they will say that uh, this is a huge challenge because uh, campaigning is also happening online and there is no regulation at all uh, these are interconnected areas that is why to make uh, concrete decisions to adopt uh, smaller laws i think uh, it will be much more uh, efficient if we have this one consolidated law platform of shared access uh, for example in facebook uh, they say e e ukraine provide us with a, uh, someone who will be responsible for maintaining this dialogue developing memorandums uh, rules during election campaigns and we don't have such a party that would be responsible for that so who would be responsible in ukraine to work with facebook for example to sign a memorandum with facebook about uh, how this platform might uh, work during the election uh, the national council the central election committee don't have this responsibilities so facebook says let's work ad hoc on concrete crimes just as many other platforms we don't have um, a body at the level of ukraine we are lagging behind let me suggest something it's a pity that uh, uh, mr tkachenko left us i would like to tell you about the case of denmark which is by far the only country in the world which has uh, uh, its own ambassador to the uh, Silicon Valley uh, it uh, so this position is called uh, taco technological ambassador this is an officially appointed person which is located in the Silicon Valley uh, he or she supports communication with uh, the tech giants such as Facebook Google and many others I was present at a meeting with the representatives of this uh, new institution which help uh, make sure that it runs smoothly they told interesting things they don't say that they have uh, changed the world however they say that it is necessary to maintain this communication which lacks now in ukraine it's a and it's very important they realize that they have to go there that they need to speak and represent the interests of their country and communicate the position of their country to these uh, you know uh, g 
important persons and think why not to follow their example and create such a position. I think it would be very normal and uh, very civilized and very contemporary. This is a good example and we need to follow it by these giants. Yes, it could be. So we have the question uh, with broadcasting from Alec Jos, who is the constant actually participant of all of our um, formats. So what are the perspective for creating uh, some local tele TV companies or radio stations, the opinion of Alec, this tool will allow to, um, you know, break the monopoly of the private media on local level. I don't understand why they will not be private. Uh, probably it's about community media. So this is the media which are financed or founded by media. In the draft law on media, there's a separate chapter dedicated to the broadcast of media, but the legacy wants it to be uh, funded by uh, from the budget. So there are no other warnings as far as I understand. But these norms are absent our legislation today. And this is something I have already mentioned about. This is the part of the uh, uh, reform and this is um, the question of privatization of the local uh, media, local and creating local uh, media networks on the basic of the universities and so media communities, yes. because you know broadcast of communities it's radio and television and media is both internet and press and uh, 32 article from this law it says that these can have it from the budget and these cannot have because there's another law about privatization that doesn't allow to do it from the budget and tv radio yes okay go ahead so it's a principle but institutionally it is in the draft law I don't know if you have answered his question because I didn't understand his question actually. It's the conversation about the world changing rapidly and while we are building some, um, you know, low capacity stations, this broadcast can happen in social media. But that's what ha happens. You know, all of the, um, you know, all of the villages that have their own Facebook groups where the main communication takes place between the members of this or that community. they. It's interesting for research what they disseminate there. They exchange some local information that somebody is selling the cow, someone is buying it, or they offer some services or maybe some garbage problem. So it's some urgent problems which this community has. And they decided to do it free of charge. They have created their closed group on Facebook and that's where they communicate. That's all and no need uh, they don't need even state budget on that optimistic note i think i shall sum up our live discussion i hope it's useful i'm reminding all of our audience that we have been discussing the draft law on media that is go according to alexander kachenko is going to become the law uh, as we have found out during this panel discussion and maybe till that time the world is going to change so much that you will have to adopt new law. I'm reminding you this is Donbass Media Forum 2021 and after a small break we'll have one more panel discussion. Stay with us. It will be interesting. <laughs>